Welcome. It is the Ski Bum Podcast, episode number 337, and it is your pals, Mario and Brian. Mario, what's up? Feels like I haven't done this in a long time, and I don't think it's been that long, but judging by the amount of alcohol that's left in the bourbon that I bought last from last time, oh boy. I'm hoping it was a long time, because I may have to go into a program. Uh-oh. Is that the uh, peak... Montana bourbon? No, there's another bourbon. Oh boy. But they were Costco buys, and you know the giant Costco sizing. I am aware, yes. When you start going through that sizing as quickly as you go through a fifth, you start saying, I don't know, we're going through this a little too fast. Like it's been it's been two weeks because I know I had well, you had a hurricane you had to deal with. And just two weeks. Damn. Yeah, and we had I had in, multiple birthdays last week, and people come out of, from out of town, so it's wow. been it's been very busy. But we're here, and speaking of big things and how to handle things, we're talking about the winter 2024-2025 predictions. This yeah. main topic, everyone's everyone's trying to figure out what's going to happen. La Nina, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it in the main topic. But first, thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. Check us out, skibumpodcast.com. We're on the socials, X, Instagram, Facebook, Untapped, YouTube, at Ski Bum Podcast. If you're not following us on Instagram, you're missing out because I am having a lot of fun with my weird posts, finding news, finding random news, and somehow turning it into something ski-related. Like this past nice. week, there was the story about the Chinese zoo where they were painting dogs to look like pandas. Oh, and you got to think, well, how is that possibly ski related? Well, perhaps the person doing it was doing it so he could sell the pandas to the zoo to make money so he could buy icon passes for his family. Boom. That was my theory. See, there's always ways. Family members, I have I can't pass passes for you all. We got to paint some more dogs. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> They're painting the dogs. How would you know? If you're going to the zoo to see a panda, you don't know what it looks like. It could be a painted dog. For don't all you, you know, want, don't you that want was sus- the best panda ever. Don't we suspend belief a lot of times to go to the movies? You're like, I know Luke Skywalker is not real, but like, I want to believe he's a Jedi. He's got the force. Yeah. You know? You Just believe. The zoo, you got to believe be too. A dog where it's all, uh, a zoo where it's all dogs, just painted as different animals. That yeah. would be genius. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. It's like instead of instead of like euthanizing the dogs, they can just make a dog zoo. That's you a can great adopt idea. them. You want to adopt a giraffe? Go ahead. This is really a dog giraffe with a really dog. long neck. Well, do you giraffe remember that dog. movie way back in the day, Shallow Hal? Yeah. With um, it was uh, it Jack Benster? Black and Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, Jack Black. That's what. Yeah. And like in reality, like Gwyneth Paltrow's character was really fat, but he saw her as Gwyneth Paltrow. He got hypnotized, right? Was that what it was? I think so. I think so. It was something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the best movie. But again, like, you know, if, it's if a we cute can... movie. But think about if you could do that in your own life. If you could take all the negative things in your that life. That was pre Gwyneth lawsuit from skiing. Think of that. That was pre Gwyneth vagina scented candles. Yes. I mean, Gwyneth has lived se- several lives since that movie. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. But think about like if you could do that, like think about the negative things about people in your life. If you could somehow take that negativity and turn it into a positivity, I think we'd all be a lot better off. Think about everything in life, right? I think that's the idea of Shao How You just make it all, everything's beautiful, everything's wonderful. You live a charmed life then. It's like, you're not um, unhappy. Love that's it. right. You're like very like one love, Bob Marley. It's a beautiful thing. We should live you're more like, the like that. Ass to ass guy of every day. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to live my life that way, especially with this. <laughs> live, live my life effing, ass to ass. Live that life ass to ass. It's like that. I get this effing election coming up in the next month. I feel like things are gonna get kind of nutty. But you know what? I'm trying to keep it positive. Trying to keep it one love. Can it's keep it shallow? How we're keeping it, it shallow? How it is nutty as shit out there. Boy. It's Tell not you. getting less nutty either. You, you so we can't gotta find unsee the this shit. We gotta find that love. 
Speaking of love, do you know that we have a Patreon? Patreon.com slash Ski Bum Podcast. You could spread some love to us because we need love. And you know what's even funnier? Like, we didn't even mention this yet. If you're watching the video, Mario and I are wearing the exact same outfits. Twins. We didn't, we didn't plan this. This was not, like, coordinated. Like, this just this just organically this is, happened. You know, it was a Friday. It's Friday, Friday Ski Bum I was had it on backwards. There. Yeah. We're wearing the same thing. We look like we're part of some sort of warriors gang at this point yeah you know, like the baseball fury kind of like, like the skiing like furies we're damn cult yeah i like it i think we look great uh, we, think... we had an idea for a cult didn't we uh, at one point i think we did yeah it was it skiantology or something like that skiantology <laughs> talking about the conspiracy ski podcast like we do a lot of stuff with this we, we oh can... yeah we, we look, we look kind of like a softball team <laughs> we, nice. we do <laughs> the skiers, you guys are the skiers. No, you the guys skiers. whooped our ass in the playoffs. That's yes, right. we did. Playoffs. <laughs> so yes, wow. patreoncom slash on podcast. Be part of this madness. You would love it. Part of our cult. You'd be. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun cult. No one's trying if to bang we your wife. Warriors. Yeah, we could run around with skis and beat people up with skis instead of bats. It would be skis. It's true. Like what city would warriors? Balls. It could be like a, uh, like a, warriors taking place in like. St. Paul, Minneapolis in the winter. There you go. Winter Warriors. Winter, winter Warriors. Winter Warriors. <laughs> winter Warriors. <laughs> not the play I think we got to remake this movie. We got to call up some people in Hollywood, use our connections, make this shit happen. Winter we Warriors. Got people. I like it. Winter we can Warriors. Do it. Come on. It'd be the same movie, just with us getting paid and some winter snow shit. Yes. Ski bum podcast at gmail.com. If you want emails about the movie or anything else, please. We're here. Instead of Central Park, it could be Park City. Boom. Ooh, I like it. Right? It's a park. It is a park. So it's almost ski season. Are you getting your workout on? Are you getting your workouts in? Are you getting your legs jacked, abs, core, all that good stuff? You better be. Do you need some gear to help you do that? Boom. I'll help you out. 10,000.cc. I am rocking my interval shorts right now. Um, that's probably the only things, difference in Mario and I's gear. I love these. These are vapor green. I mean, it looks it's a weird color to describe. It's like a really, really, really light green. Like if you were to see toxic, like a toxic smoke, toxic kind of Avenger. color. Think about like when you see like a pool of acid and that kind of steam that comes off it, that color, like a light green, like a whitish green. That's the color of these shorts. I think they look cool. Nice. They're kind of see-through. You're welcome. Athlete-led design. Brian. Test, iterate, repeat. Iron sharpens iron. The only way to become your best is to work with the best. Their motto is better than yesterday. At the heart of 10,000 is the idea of pursuit in business, fitness, life, and skiing. They believe in moving forward with a quiet dedication to constant improvement and to becoming just a bit better than you were yesterday. Go there. 10,000.cc. So, Use the code Bschneider15. 15% off. Boom. I recommend interval shorts, interval pants. I forget which shirt I had on today. The foundation shirt, I think. They're, all their stuff is dynamite. It's all based on, you know, it's from like former military people doing uh, first responders, like people who actually do work, who are actually tough. They design this stuff. This isn't like. So I'm on the site now and I'm looking yeah. at it and I have this add on to my browser that pops up because I pound a lot of United fly miles. Yes. So this is part of the United fly mile thing. I get two miles per dollar if I order from here. Just saying. Look at that. But I'm Where's actually looking miles? for what kind of pant would you recommend for somebody that doesn't work out at all, works about 60 to 70 hours a week <laughs> and Still wants to get in ski shape. What, what shorts would you would you recommend for somebody like me? The shorts or the pants? Yeah, shorts. I love the, the, that, well, I like the interval the interval pants? shorts and pants. Those are awesome. Um, if you want like more of a like a real pant, like a not like a sweat panty kind of thing, they have yeah. the um, this is casual pant. I think it's like the tactical pant they're called. Oh, the utility pant looks good. Looks like regular, nice flat yeah, front, regular. Pant. Oh, what I like about it, it just has the uh, the Velcro to tighten the waist so you don't have to wear a belt. Yes. And it's like it's got a bit of stretchy to it, too, which is nice. 
So the, the utility nice. one is good. And there's like the regular, um, there's more of like a normal pant too. Those have kind of like cargo-ish pockets on there. I didn't love the session pants. They're more for running. They're, they've really, if you have big ankles, I've got kind of like beefy ankles. They're cankles. really tight at the bottom. Not not cankles. I got like, like <laughs> big, like manly, muscular ankles. So the session pant, I don't love those. They're okay. But the the interval pants are awesome, and uh, those the what is it tactical five pocket pant? Those are the ones. There's the tactical utility and the five pocket. I'm looking pant. at the tactical five pocket pant, and the funniest part is because I'm just an idiot when I look at something. The way they have them positioned, like when they show the pants, like they don't show them straight like that. They show them like bow legged. So mm -hmm. there's a few things I'm like, is this for bow legged people? Do I have to have bow legs? <laughs> Bow-legged pants, yeah. The bow-legged pants. They're cut specifically for bow-legged people. It's kind of nice. Bow world. At least somebody's thinking about those bow-legged fuckers, right? Somebody, exactly. finally. You know, they, they probably they have, have lefty, lefty pants, too. <laughs> lefty they pants also. Too. It's the <laughs> lefty five-pocket tactical pant. Left-handed pants. That time, finally. Maybe you want the grenade or the gun in the left side instead of the right gun for the tactical, right? You ready finally, your prayers have been answered. 10,000.cc, B. Schneider, 15. 15% off. Mario. Oh, you know what we forgot? Huh. Snowbound Expo. I think we're only about six weeks out at this point. It's I getting close. I think that closed. code doesn't work anymore. Yeah, we might have some sort of code. It might be a discounted code. But I think Snowbound, we got we got banned Snowbound on this one too. is coming. Yeah, they. Ha we were trying to have some Snowbound folks on for an interview. But, you know, we're uh, we got some logistical issues. There's some stuff going on in the uh, in the beautiful UK, but they haven't got it back to us. And it's OK because we're going to eventually have them on. But the Snowbound Expo is coming. Boston, Massachusetts, November 15th through 17th. They got resorts. Yeah. They got gear. They got some speakers. Katie Zellis, Gigi Ruff, Hannah Kearney, Hannah Teeter. Hello, Hannah Teeter. Todd Hello, Richards. Teeter. Donnie Peltier, Maine's greatest athlete, Dan Egan, Chris Anthony, Alice Merriweather, Elijah Teeter, Mary Walsh, Marty Fuller, Kendall Goodman, Kelsey Boyer, Henry Rivers, Michael Tellemike Russell, and Noah Dines. So they got a lot of folks there. It's going to be a good time. We're you had me there. at Hannah Teeter. You had me at Hannah Teeter. You can't, uh, can't deny Hannah. It's going to be a fun time. Hannah. We'll be there Friday and Saturday. And we'll be psyched to meet up with people. We don't know what we're doing exactly. We're still working on our uh, exact details, but we'll be around and it's going to be a good time. So go to snowboundexpo.com. Go to our website, skibumpodcast.com. We'll have a link for some discounted tickets. 42 days to go. They have it counting down on the site. So stop yeah, reach out. Time. We start Maybe getting we'll get together, right? That could be fun. With that, Mario, let's kick this off the way we always do. It's time for our pray today. So what are we drinking? Um, so as I said, I'm on my second of two bottles of Costco liquor that I got just two short weeks ago. I got to say that giant bottle of Bullet, remember I showed you that on the podcast? Uh, oh, yeah. That's gone. That's been gone. Now, do you have the executive membership, which you get 2% back? I do. Ah, oh, well, then you're you're making money doing this. I'm losing money if I don't buy like this and drink it. Hey, right? hey. Um, so now I'm on the giant bottle of Maker's Mark, oh. and this one is actually that far down already. And this is two weeks of let's plow through the bullet bourbon, and then we'll go through this. So this to is be me fair. And my to be fair, you are kind of dealing with some PTSD uh. from the hurricane. It is. You know, is. you gotta and you know what? I've cut down my beer intake to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think we talked about I was telling you about the um whatchamacallit, the the vodka vodka iced teas. Yes. In the can that I was drinking. And those are good because they were not carbonated, whatever. And like the, the carbonation, I've just been getting a little bit over it. Um so I kind of just stopped drinking a lot of beer. So I'm like, well, what do you drink instead? I drink bourbon. <laughs> what do you drink with your tea? Bourbon. What do you drink in your tea? Bourbon. Just kind of what you do. Fruit Loops and bourbon. 
You know what? I, uh, I I totally I don't know if blew off, forgot. I, I stepped away from Maker's Mark for a while, and then Did you? a couple of years. I think it was maybe last summer. I was at a a barbecue, and they had that. That was like the the top shelf bourbon that was there, and mm. I I just had it like on the rocks, and I was like damn i forgot how good this was because again you always look for the newer fancier oh look this came in fourth place in the singapore world bourbon competition <laughs> you know and you forget about the old stuff the stuff that's been there for, mountains. for a long a fancy time fancy glass that is a sweet glass which mountain is that this is uh i think this is the um uh is this t- i think this is the teton, teton? glass nice yeah so they have a uh, Kickstarter this gla- that glass company. It's North um, North Drinkware. North Drinkware. So they have a Kickstarter going for. I guess they're expanding the line to be like tumbler glasses and all sorts of stuff. So good for them. Yeah, that is great. And unfortunately, I can't have nice drinkware because everything I have has been broken. I had pint yeah. glasses from Telluride, from Zermatt, from I, that's like what I would buy. I'd buy like a pint glass from you know whenever we went on a, a trip. Yeah. All broken. Everything's broken. I'm just like you I gotta can't. get like that unbreakable shit. You know the What's stuff why? that's like all I in plastic. Well, dude, I have all those Yeti cups. I have so many like Yeti. Oh yeah. You know, sixteen and twenty ounce mugs. That's all I drink out of. I'm like, if it falls, it won't break. So there we go. It's metal. It's metal. Don't worry about it's, it. Bang it's metal. It won't break. It's, it's metal. So that's what we think out of. Got some dense, dense look cool in the metal. Yeah. And you know what? Kids are not getting yelled at. There's no cleanup. You're just like, yeah, don't worry about it. Just pick it up. I can still use it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. There's no crying. So I can't have, I can't have fancy glasses for another like probably six years. I'm thinking. This is why we don't have nice things. (laughs) That's what you help the kids, right? Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Oh, all right. What do you got going? I love Maker's Mark. Well, so. Funny that you mentioned those vodka iced tea cans because Ooh. we had a little birthday party last weekend for my daughter and I got some beverages for the party. So what did I get? I got me a Surfside. I got the, the peach tea and vodka. Oh, that's the good one. This one yeah, is I was so hooked good. on that. Yeah. Now, I'm looking for some numbers in here now because it's alcohol. They usually don't put it on there, but I was looking for it like feels- a... I think they're like 4.8, 4.6. I looked it up the other day because I, I was like, well, 4.5. It doesn't taste like there's anything in there. Like right. it really, like you really literally could just chug like two of those down because Easily, you're hot. Yeah. So the four and, a, four and a half percent, hammered. which is nothing, 100 calories. I think this was 100 calories. They said that somewhere, maybe in the box. But I was looking for like caffeine numbers because if it's iced tea, it's got to have a little bit of caffeine, right? Depends if it's made with caffeinated or decaffeinated. I would think if I was default tea, like standard tea is caffeinated. So I'm like, okay, this has got to be caffeinated because that's what I wanted today. Because again, we're podcasting a little bit later. I wanted a little like, you know, I wasn't going to drink a whole Hill Cliff. I just needed a little caffeine, which again, a little caffeine, a little vodka, keep you mellow. I like that. That's nice. Very, very light. It's not like an overly sweet. It's not like a Snapple peach tea where it's just like sugar bomb. Oh, no, they're pretty good. I think there's fake sugar in there. So I got in this conversation. Artificial like, sweetener, it says. Yeah. Right. And I don't like the fake sugar. I don't like any of that. So I'm like, so I started thinking about it. I'm like, holy crap, I can make my own peach tea. So I found Celestial Seasonings was on sale, two for eight or whatever. I'm like, let me buy a box of that, make my own iced tea. So I made my own iced tea, put a little vodka in. And I'm like, it's the same thing, only better for me. Take that stateside. Takes that. But those are very convenient because they have them out at a lot of places. So I get it. You know, you have it, yeah. but at home, you should drink a little more culture, a little more healthy if you can. Like it's trading up, right? It's adorable. I don't drink too many of these. I'm not making my own tea. I'm not getting peach celestial. I'm just not doing it. Like it's just not gonna happen. I'd rather Dude, I just got, I got celestial happen. seasonings, peach tea. And you take that, it doesn't have caffeine. You throw I got the, the water pot thing that you heat up. You throw throw that on there, let it steep for four minutes, boom, chuck it with some ice, and you're ready to go. Boom. Boom. It's just not happening, but I appreciate <laughs> yeah. the effort. I, yeah, like, I don't know what you're saying. This sounds listen, like too much work. I love the DIYness of it. It's just not gonna happen. Like I just it's, it's kind of crafting the cocktail from the ground up. Like it's yeah. total craft at that point. That's true. You're uh, you're yeah. you're like a 
you, you'd be like, I was inspired by <laughs> a trip to the supermarket and seeing the peach tea on sale. Exactly. And that inspiration carried forth into this beverage, this cocktail. Then, here. My mixology. And then, somebody, and then when somebody crafts the mixology, crafted it, something like, you just made iced tea and put vodka in it. Like, exactly. No, no, and I can sell that to you. Hand crafted. Hand crafted. It was handcrafted. Yeah. Handcrafted. Yes. Well, speaking of handcrafting, let's go to ski news. All right. Our friend Doug Fish over at the Indie Pass, he is handcrafting an empire over there. This is he's hot a, off the press. He's a genius. He's still going, man. He's hot off going. the presses. Indy Pass becomes the temporary owner of historic Black Mountain in New Hampshire. Indy Pass will ensure the ski area is open for its 90th season and will implement a community operated co op business model by the start of the 2025 26 season. Indy Pass and Entebeni Systems have purchased Black Mountain, New Hampshire's oldest ski area, from the Fischera family for the past 30 years. The Fischera family has worked tirelessly to keep mountains open for the community to enjoy. Indy Pass will own and operate the resort for this coming season and will transfer the ownership to a community co-op by the 25-26 season. The family will continue to support the mountain as it transitions to the co-op model. Indy Pass's managing director, Eric Morganson, will relocate to Jackson, New Hampshire and lead the resort's operation as the general manager throughout the 24-25 season, Andy Shepard, recently retired CEO and GM of Saddleback and newly named director of community engagement for the Indy Pass, will assist Morganson in transitioning the mountain to the co-op model. This says hmm. Doug Fischera has been named director of mountain operations. Not Doug Fish, Doug Fischera. How many it's kind Fischera's of Doug Fish, but only elongated. Yeah. <laughs> the resort Maybe is that's his open. stage name, Doug Fish. Yeah. The resort is scheduled to open to the public on December 20th, 24. Morganson aims to shift the resort's ownership to the community where anyone can purchase shares, allowing an already passionate community to be part of the future of the special mountain. Thanks to the Fischera family, Indy Pass is taking over the stewardship of Black Mountain and intends to turn it into an impactful community-run co-op. The sustainable model will keep this historic mountain viable for generations. There are dozens of small ski areas across the country struggling to stay afloat, and we believe this financial model is a viable option for many. For-profit, nonprofit, and co-ops, all independent mountains matter. They are the part, or they're the past and the future of our sport. So season passes are on sale at blackmt.com. Purchasers of this year's season passes will retain the first option to buy shares in the forthcoming co-op. Oh, we got to get some shares. So look at so so think about this. They think about TV shows like Bar Rescue and stuff. Like this, this seems to be Mount what Rescue. Indie Pass is doing. So instead of going to the Veil vale model, where it's like we're gonna buy it, we're gonna mold into what we wanted to, we're gonna shove it out there, and you're gonna be stuck with this. They're going with the hey, we're gonna buy it, we're gonna help clean a few things up, and then we're gonna let you do with it what you want. You know, do you want to do? co-op do you want to do for profit do you want to do non-profit we're here to help you and we're going to set you in that direction like that is a kick-ass model like that is yeah. a really cool way to go about helping out these ski areas well it's flexible too right you're not stuck to one model you're not stuck to one model and think about if you're that community in jackson new hampshire you know like the last thing you want is to see your mountain get bought up by a veil and you're like up oh, here we go and all these epic past people are going to come and they're going to they're going to get rid of all the people who were there before and they're going to per, they're going to put up gift shops and condos it's like well now hey chew it out you, and poop out another version of ale what That's do you it. guys want to do with your mountain we're going to sell yeah. shares we're going to help you guys all be part of running this together as a co-op like that's like we'll partner with the cannabis co-op i like it that's a beautiful thing like i right? really uh, love what there's a lot of capability and, right there and now i didn't they do that last year? I they did something with Black Mountain, I thought, last year, where they were helping did they partner it. with the sales of the tickets or something. I don't remember. Oh, they they did something last year too, and I forget what it was. 
but they this isn't the first time they've done something like this. So I was flipping through the channels the other day, and I came across Soul Plane. Have you ever seen that movie start to finish? Uh, no, I did not. I have not. There's a reason, uh, <laughs> but I got about probably like a quarter into it. And then I was like, I just can't watch this anymore. But it's kind of the same premise. You know, he came into a lot of money by getting stuck in the toilet of an airplane. So he decides to start his own airline. And that's the soul plane. Kevin Hart, which I didn't realize that was like one of his first movies. So I was like, wow, I, oh, I would really? never have attributed him to soul plane. And there you go. What can he do? It, it was it was quite magical for a while. And then I was like, I just I either have to be more stoned or very drunk to watch this. I just mm. can't, couldn't do it. Yeah, it's a humdinger. But, like it, that, huh? but it was funny. I got to say it was, but I could imagine this being something like that. It'd be like Soul Mountain. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of Soul, we have a new Soul train rolling through Colorado. Oh. So we're moving right into the proposed train service aims to ease Colorado's horrific ski traffic in coming years. So... A proposal to utilize Colorado's existing rail lines and extend service beyond Winter Park to Steamboat and further north. How much further north can they go? Is gaining momentum. So the initiative is championed by Colorado Governor Jared Polis and state lawmakers proposing utilizing the train tracks already in place to create passenger rail service from Winter Park to Steamboat uh, and as far north as Craig. But the plan would be to increase rail service from Denver to Winter Park, which is currently operated by Amtrak and only runs on weekends. Ooh. And the infrastructure for extended rail line beyond Winter Park um, already exists and is currently used for coal transport. But as our reliance Ooh, on coal, the coal train <laughs> eases, uh, lawmakers want to use the tracks uh, to be repurposed to accommodate passenger cars originating at Denver's Union Station with potential stops in Union Park, Fraser, Kremling, Yampa, not Tampa, Yampa, Yampa Bay, <laughs> uh, Steamboat, Hayden, Craig, because the tracks already exist, the service would be operational in just a few years. One source of funding for the train expansion is already in place thanks to a bill signed by Governor Polis in the spring that changes a three dollar day that charges a three dollar day tax on rental cars so the rental cars are paying for the rail cars so right now the distance from union station in denver to winter park is about 66 miles roughly hmm. and the distance to steamboat is about 166 miles so basically they're adding over a hundred miles of well i mean not adding tracks they're just connecting those hundred right. miles of tracks and then craig is another i don't know let's call it another 10 to 15 miles west so they're adding mm -hmm. over 100 miles of connectivity from denver and you know what like if you look on the map like Denver to Steamboat is not an easy route. It's not like the drive to Vail, the, the theoretical drive to Vail, where it's just like a, a straight shot out. So this this is really cool. And to reuse existing tracks, it seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. And you wonder why it took them this long to, to figure out how to do this. What would be cool is if they start developing rail usage in the u.s for passengers that's like efficient to like european standards right like yeah i mean all the mountains great. i mean what yeah. mountain town out there doesn't have some sort of train service getting to it exactly and why wouldn't you want to use that like you don't want the cars parking out there you don't have the space for it you don't have the space to to house people so get rid of the cars throw everybody on trains you can park at a station or something like that jump on the train and boom zip up to wherever you want to go like i would love that because instead of having to, like get in your car and deal with driving and all that like that ugh. see now i like, remember me trashing the the uh the epic clothes whatever that, that whatever they're calling it the rental gear my epic gear i think it's called 
Oh yeah. Now, if you have this in place, that makes more sense because you're not lugging all of your gear on the train with you. Yeah. You know, then it can make sense. You just rent it for the weekend, head back home, come out, rent it another set again. Then I can see it making a little more sense. So I have taken in the Alps. I have gone from Paris to the Alps on a train to go skiing with my ski gear. And it wasn't that bad. You get on there and it's, it's Europe. So they're not going to jack all your stuff. Like you expect in the, in the States as much, they still will, but you got to watch, but then you're up in the Alps by then at the station, everybody jumps on and you're talking high speed train, high speed train. You're like three hours, what takes you normally eight or 10 hour drive. And you're there and boom, you're in the Alps. Like, magical why yeah. can't we do that in this country to eliminate the stress of driving because think about it you're this isn't like you're just on a highway in the middle of kansas doing 80 and there's not there's no you know even that it's a pain in the dinner else. it's so a you want to ski or you want to drive you want to drive you go on a driving vacation you want to ski you go on a ski vacation yeah to be on the train like just you get on there you throw your gear in the the hold and you just yeah. sit back and you get some yeah like i said have some dinner have a sleep, drink, watch a movie, sleep, have some drinks versus food. like white knuckling it. And you're like driving on 70 and there's ice and there's tractor trailers. Jack kids are fighting. Them. You're worried about <laughs> oh. kids are fighting in the backseat. The screaming stops. Everybody shut up. I'm trying. I'm not, I don't want to kill us. You know, the whole thing. It's horrible. Yeah. This is, this is Terrifying. again, no brainer. It's so cool that they're finally doing this again. How long is going to take? Could take a while. We're still waiting for the gondola in Utah. Like we're waiting, but yeah, this is going to be, this is, I think this could be a really big success. If, uh, if, and when it actually gets completed, makes sense. No stress, no stress yeah. or jump on the damn train. First class, it quiet cab, it, whatever you got, like Europe, they have the quiet cabs. Everybody shuts the hell up. It's a beautiful thing. Quiet yeah. is a beautiful thing. It's quiet. Just a well, moment of quiet. There's going to be a little bit less quiet in Vail because oh. Vail has announced another base village planned. The town of Vail, Vail Resorts and East West Partners today announced a partnership to develop the West Lionhead area into a fourth base village at Vail Mountain, the world's premier alpine destination. The new base village planned in the location formerly designated for the Evervale project hmm. will reinforce Vale Mountain's status as a world-class destination and is anticipated to feature access to the resort's 5,317 acres of legendary terrain plus new lodging, restaurants, boutiques, and gift shops, skier services, as well as community benefits such as workforce housing, public spaces, transit, and parking. Vail Town Council voted unanimous in favor of the partnership and creating a new master plan for the West Lionhead Base Village development. The Town Council will update the town's strategic plan to reflect the West Lionhead as a priority that will improve the resort experience and benefit the community. The town will partner with Vail Resorts and East West Partners on the community process to create a new vision and the master plan for the West Lionhead area. The partnership to develop the West Lionhead Base Village includes incremental workforce housing. As a result, Vail Resorts will dismiss its appeal of the town of Vail's condemnation of the company's East Vail property that was planned for Vail Resorts' incremental affordable workforce housing project. Ooh. So is this going to be more chic and exclusive or less chic and exclusive? I think it has to be less chic and exclusive because it has to have workforce housing this is going to be where they're going to keep it real this it's is going to be, be like and i go back to soul plane so the terminal for soul plane was magical they had a 99 cent store in there like yeah. that's what i'm talking about so this is going to be think a, the hundred dollar store in there five below uh, maybe i think the hundred dollar store is more like it like nothing hundred dollar below <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think 100 and above. Oh, yeah. 100 and above. 100 and above. They're going to be mocking the five below model. But five yeah. Below, 50 below, right? Yeah. I mean, that's one of the biggest issues they've always had. And with all these 
you know, high-end resorts always seem to be having is the lack of housing for employees. So at least they're bringing that as, you know, making that as one of the priorities. You know, and it just sounds like it's the stigma that affordable housing has. It sounds like affordable housing. Oh, it's a project. No, it's not a project. It's affordable housing. Like it's affordable. That's all it is. Like it's priced so that people that work there and live there and are not on vacation with billions of dollars can actually come in and stay somewhere or live somewhere. Right. Yeah. And you know, if you were to go to Vail resorts or go to Vail, Colorado on Zillow and just mm -hmm. look in the village area, it is the absolutely price? insane. If you were yeah. on the South side of 70, Okay. You need like the cheapest thing I'm seeing is 1.1 million for a 506 square foot condo. Damn. Yeah. So if you're Elmer J. Fudd, millionaire, you're not going to own a mansion and you're not going to own a yacht. You may own one of these little bungalows in Vail. Well, it's Elmer J. Fudd being a millionaire and having a mansion and a yacht shows how awful inflation has been the last 70 years. Exactly. Because a millionaire used to be able to afford those things. Here, a millionaire gets a 500 square foot condo. They're sitting like, what happened? What does that tell you? What happened? What does that tell you? How big is that condo? 505 square feet. That's 506. It? Sorry. Yes. That's what a million dollars gets you in Vail. So that's one third of the, the less than one third of the size of the place that I have right now. That's there fucked go. up. There that's you go. Really fucked up. Mm -hmm. Wow. 1.5? 1 million. It's basically a million. I wonder if I could like heli lift my place and just plop it in there and then sell it real quick hmm. for like a few million. I, and then I rebuild here. I don't quite know the logistics of that. I don't know Damn. if there's any sort of complexities and permitting required. But it might you know be what it is. To. You know how I move this bitch? Blimp it. I blimp it over. How's Mary getting over there? He'll be there in like probably a week, depending Six on the winds. He's blimping plus. it. Yep. How are you getting there? Blimping. Blimping Dude, I'm easy. telling you, blimp technology is going to be the the cruise ships of the sky. You don't have to worry about it. Just you're cruising on the sky. You're blimping. There you go. Blimping, baby. Well, so now far. if you want to go blimping. If you want to go on the other side of 70, you can get a 618 square foot condo, one bedroom, one bath for 665. Oh, that's not bad. That's basically the size. Is there a crack of, house? What's well, basically the size of our Hoboken condo? If mm. you want, if a reference for three people listening right now who've been to our condo. Yeah, reference wise, I'd say one big room, little kitchen attached, right? And then you had a decent sized bedroom and bathroom. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not bad. But you can blimp that too. Blimp that shit up. Just cut it out of the building and just blimp it right out. Out and up. Yeah. See you later. Bye guys. Onward and upward. Bye, Felicia. The wind's taking me that way. I'm going. The uh one downside to this condo, four hundred and fifty dollar HOA. That's not bad. Isn't that bad, really. That's Still. not bad. I mean, Killington way back was what, like eight hundred of oh. what they were paying, yes. and now they're probably up to well over a thousand. My condo mm. down here is about seven, seven seventy. Damn, it sucks, but I think it's a garage too. Boom, and short-term rentals are allowed. So, well, look at that Airbnb. It. You got a fireplace. Not Can you shit. make a lot of money on Airbnb still? Everybody says, oh, Airbnb this and Airbnb that. Like, I don't know. Has the market like swelled with that? I honestly don't know from experience, but my concern with Airbnbs was always the fact that you need to have massive demand. And it seemed like a lot of folks were buying when the market was frothy and there was low interest rates. Yeah. And which is the, which is when everything kind of got blown out of hand. And now I don't know if we are in a recession, if people are going to cut back on vacationing. Can you fill that unit and can you make your mortgage if you have one to mm. keep paying? I don't know. I've always just, I've only stayed at one or two Airbnbs. 
I usually prefer staying at a hotel because yeah. there's no cleaning fees. Like you, you kind of know what you're getting into a little bit more. No toilet cam. No, no. Yeah. Bedroom cam. That's, you know. Yeah. Same. I actually have this little device. You go into a hotel and you hold it up and it tells you if something is like, can read or transmit. It's Ooh, look at that. very psychotic. And that's like how, it. that's the level I've gone to these days. I like that. I'm starting to get into my creepy old man phase where I'm like, I'm paranoid. I'm going to wear a tin foil on my head when I fly and just see what people say. I like that. So I, I don't know. I don't want the, bad move. The, the waves to get me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Go through TSA with like a foil hat. Like, sorry, what the fuck do you have on there? <laughs> and I'm getting strip search every time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> my ass is so sore. They strip <laughs> search me twice. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Well, it's good that they're actually looking at for the um, getting some employee housing in here. And, you know, we'll see how this turns out because, you know, at least there'll be more gift shops because it's really important to get your veil sweatshirt when you go out there. Yeah, that affordable housing is cool. disturbing and a very serious problem everywhere. Yep. It's good it's in the plan. So we shall see. All right. And that wraps up the old ski news for the week. So now on to the main topic. And, you know, as skiers... It's getting to this time of year. We're early October. Some places have seen a little bit of snow. Most places want to see snow. So as we wait, we start trying to figure out, okay, are we going to travel? Where are we going to go? How do we know where to go? Should we go the Farmer's Almanac? Should we look at Noah? Well, we are going to look at Noah today. I think Noah looks at the Farmer's Almanac. <laughs> Maybe they do, and they kind of like change it up a bit, mix. It. You know, they're like reading it, and they're like, "Okay, I'm going to do my thing with my technology," but I'm still referring to the Farmer's Almanac. Well, it's like you know when you opinion. when you copy your friends' like answers on a test, you always change like one or two of the things. Exactly. Probably they could have done that too. They're just kind of grabbing the Farmer's Almanac, and like, "Yeah, well, we're going to say above average for here, and change this number to like a thirty percent to a fifty percent." They're like, "I didn't prepare anything because I went out last night." So I'm going to just rewrite the farmer's almanac <laughs> or just, they put into AI chat, AI, chat GPT. What do you think? Chat GPT. Yeah. So that's here it. Here is what they're, th they published this about a week ago. And now just so you know that while these predictions are based on detailed scientific data backed by months of pattern analysis and years of research, they're not precise predictions for specific States. However, they can offer a real look at what regions may look like this winter. So here we go. So NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, one of the most trusted meteorology sources in the world. So they're making winter predictions for North America based on patterns and data readings in the Pacific Ocean. This is called ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation. Hmm. And so refers to the general climate patterns in the Pacific Ocean and does not indicate an El Nino cycle, despite the name. From this pattern, they can measure temperature anomalies that are developing. These predicted cycles are indicated by terms you've heard before, El Nino, La Nina. El Nino and La Nina represent opposite extremes in the ENSO, which refers to the coherent and sometimes very strong year-to-year -year variations in sea surface temperatures, rainfall, surface air pressure, and atmospheric circulation that occur across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. So El Nino is characterized by warmer tropical Pacific Ocean surface temperatures, typically last about 9 to 12 months, and is more frequent. La Nina is characterized by cooler than normal tropical Pacific Ocean temperatures, typically lasting 1 to 3 years. So different pressure systems make up another key piece to understanding the ENSO cycle. So low pressure systems pull air in and are associated with El Nino cycles of warm Pacific Ocean temperatures. They pull the Pacific jet stream south to its neutral position, hmm. which brings moisture to the southern U.S. and warmer temperatures to the north. That's El Nino. La Nina is high pressure, which pushes air out and leads to cooler Pacific Ocean temperatures. This system pushes 
the poplar and Pacific jet streams north, bringing drier conditions to the southern U.S. and colder air with above average precipitation to the north. Hmm. So we like La Nina for the most part. So Noah is continuing a La Nina watch and brings emergent chances up to 71%. Latest update from Noah brought minimal difference to the surface so to speak however there are key changes that are noticeable and we dive in deeper the chances that a la nina will emerge in the coming weeks has bumped up to 70 to 71 percent oh wow yeah um, well so we're looking favorable on la nina well theoretically so but the thing is they're looking at the temperature outlooks now if you are in washington northern idaho Montana, they're saying below for seasonal temperature, below average temperatures. So colder. Mm, very cold. Yeah. Then a lot of like the whole South and the whole East Coast, and even like part of the Midwest from like Ohio, Ohio, South, and to the to the east, they're all saying like above average temperatures. Oh wow. Hmm. Which doesn't look so great. And that goes through February. Uh, so they're oh, saying, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of folks. Uh, northern New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, Southern California. Extended s southern swath of warm temperatures indicates that these states will possibly see warmer temps earlier in the ski season. Again, so 30 to 40% chance of that of the seasonal temperatures being warmer for a, a lot of those areas. And now looking at precipitation, again, that whole area, the um, Washington, Northern Idaho, Montana, above average precipitation. And that goes across almost the whole Northern US. It kind of dips down by the Great Lakes and Michigan. So and Northern back. US is maybe predicted to get a ton of snow. Uh, but well, precipitation. Now, if you got a, mm. if if you have a above average temperature, yeah, that's true. Could then you get wet. lots of rain. But again, it looks like again you're you're in Montana, Idaho, Washington State, even northern Oregon. You're looking really good for some above temperature snow and cold. So those seem like they could be. Yeah, it's a good combination. I never want to say it's a sure thing, but it's looking really good. Also, too, across the whole Midwest and northern U.S., everything is looking above average for precipitation. Again, the roll of the dice that we have in the Northeast seems to be that, that temperature forecast. So we'll see how that goes. That's very cool. And it's looking a little concerning in, again, New Mexico, Southern Colorado, Arizona, everything's looking like below precipitation and above temperatures. So that seems like the double whammy down there. But again, one of the nice things that this talks about here, this whole recap of the prediction is that three month outlook, we've seen them before. It all indicates La Nina with the Southern portion of the country expecting Higher temperatures, lower amounts of precipitation than normal, and the northern portion of the country looking at lower temperatures, higher amounts of precipitation. But of course, these predictions are never set in stone. Noah gotta stated, add that in there. Yeah, I got to give a disclaimer. Chances of a moderate to strong La Nina are currently less than 50% through the fall and winter. And so neutral conditions are favored to reemerge by February through April. This means that while we might be in for a La Nina winter, We'll probably not see weather events that mimic the most extreme scenarios possible. So hmm. Pacific Northwest will be the spot to be, it looks like. Good Very to go. Cool. Yeah. And they said it might be a good year to ski the east, maybe. Mm, maybe. Being cautious, because again, it could be uh it could be rain. That's but... always a disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. Central and southwestern states do not give up hope. Colorado and Utah, we're looking at you. As the old saying goes, it ain't over till it's over, and it sure as hell ain't over even yeah, it sure as hell 
isn't over. It hasn't even started, really. Well. Forecast doesn't look promising, but sleeper storms are never out of the realm of possibility. Every skier has seen evidence of the magic that a lake effect field storm can deliver for Utah's Cottonwood Canyons. And who hasn't heard tales of snow that barrels over your head after a multi-day dump at Wolf Creek? So, mm. you know, take this with a grain of salt. It's always fun to try to, to predict. One thing I think we should do is we should compare what they've predicted at the beginning of the season and see how it plays out. Cool to see how yeah. Noah does it how the farmer's almanac does it and be like, Hey, after the last three years, it really seems like this one is getting it right. Significantly more than the other one, because then which one is spot on. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. Is this, uh, when you look at this, is this going to change the way you plan your ski season? You can't. Cause you still don't know if you're going to have a freak or anomaly, like, you could be missing out on a powder day, powder week, right? Like yeah. you go out, it could be a drought all season. And then there's a little snow coming up to when you get there and then boom, powder out when you're yep. there. Like you just never know. Always be ready to ski. Always stay positive. Always got your Uller medal. Do what you got to do. Make your best right. season possible, right? A, B, R, always be ready. Always be ready. A, always, B, B, R, ready. <laughs> Always be ready. And remember, coffee is for closers. Put That's the right. coffee down. <laughs> if you haven't seen anybody Glenn gets Gary that reference. Yeah, that's right. Anybody gets that reference, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you got some work to do. That is one of the only movie sets that Alec Baldwin hadn't shot somebody. <laughs> that's right. Think about it. They even said he didn't play with a gun on that movie set. That's it. That's right. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Kept us cool. That was a, a great movie, but slow moving, but great movie. Well, it was originally a play. And you can kind of tell yeah. because you can see where the way it would be all just on stage with yeah. you know, people acting that out. But And all great actors. Like, I think every person in there almost won, like, some World kind of class, award. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Worth checking out for any of you, uh, any of you kids out there who want to go see the classics. But there's just that scene. It's like 15 minutes of it. You could probably de like look at it on YouTube. It tells you all about life in that in that scene. Yep. It lays out like selling capitalism, like life that we as we know it. Do you want the Cadillac or the steak knives? What kind of person do you want to be? That's right. What kind of man do you want to be? You gotta ask yourself Put that question. The coffee down. <laughs> yep. You can't talk to me like that. Yes, I can. <laughs> Success is never owned. It is rented. And every day the rent is due. It's awesome. And then he shot somebody. No, no, he wanted it. They cut that out of the script. Yeah. Different, <laughs> different, different film. I think that wraps it up this week. Kept it under an hour. Look at us. So we have a Noah prediction. What is your personal prediction? My personal prediction? Two minute I'm, personal prediction. I am going to enjoy every second I'm on the mountain, every turn I make. I have a I'm gonna have a tremendous ski season. Yes. I'm gonna love every minute on the snow. And I'm gonna play the hand I'm dealt like every year. Like last year, you yeah. know, 50 degree day, rain next day, 20 degrees for scrapes. Like you do what you can. You know, you play get what the hand you dealt. That's yep. right. You do what you have to do, and you deal with the hand you're dealt. Uh, I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be an amazing season wherever you go, whenever you go. You just have to believe, and it'll happen. It'll happen. Just And if it doesn't happen that you have snow, you got to have a great time no matter where you go. That's You just got to be ready to party. You'll be ready to have a good time. That's right. Always be ready. Always ABR. ABR. Always be ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right well that wraps up the podcast for the week thank you for listening we really do appreciate it check us out skibumpodcast.com go to the socials x instagram facebook untapped youtube you're at ski bum podcast help us out support the show patreon.com slash ski bum podcast we'd really appreciate that send us an email ski bum podcast at gmail.com snowbound expo we are less than six weeks away november 15th or 17th boston 
go to the website, go to snowboundexpo.com or go to our it's website. Come up in no time. Discount code. It's going to be here in no time, like you said. Thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Stay high, stay fluid. See ya.